Bits versus Bytes, Mega versus Giga, Kilo versus Kibi, and what the heck is a Yada Byte? Units of memory have not been historically the easiest to keep straight. But if you are shopping new storage or memory for your device, today's memory unit quick guide has got your back. Whether you're looking to save a text file or a weekend's worth of 4K home videos. This is DIY in 5. Welcome to DIY in 5. My name is Trisha Hirschberger and today's episode will delve into the various units of memory. Gigabyte, terabyte, petabyte, and just how much can each of those store? Let's find out. Before we get into the bits and bytes of it all, I humbly ask that if you find the information in today's video useful, please feel free to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell so that you don't miss out on any future tech tips. A bit is one single binary digit, and it's either a zero or a one. You'll see bits represented by a small b, a byte is typically 8 bits, and together one byte usually represents a character, like a letter or a number. Bytes are abbreviated with a large B, as in megabytes. This is especially important when looking at internet speeds, for example. If you have a 100 megabit per second download speed, that is very different from a 100 megabyte per second. Eight times less, in fact. Since internet speeds are normally measured in megabits per second, this can get rather confusing for folks unfamiliar with the smallest units of data measurement. Just think larger B, large, small B, small. Most memory is measured from here in bytes. You've probably heard of kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, and so on. In practice, a kilobyte means 1000 bytes, but that's not entirely accurate. Because of how the binary system works, one kilobyte actually equals 1024 bytes, not an even 1000. This difference gets larger as we go up the ladder. This is why a 250 gigabyte hard drive may only display 232 gigabytes of usable storage, for example, because humans and computers measure things differently. That's the most confusing part of all of this. Once we acknowledge that, then the prefixes mean just what you would think. Kilo is 1,000, Mega is 1,000, technically 1,024 of those, Giga is 1,000, but technically 1,024 of those, and so on. To put it in perspective, one kilobyte, capital K, capital B, is roughly one very short story. Graphics of small websites may range from 5 to 100 kilobytes. A megabyte, or capital M, capital B, is roughly 1,000 that size. So one megabyte is approximately four full books worth of data. A high resolution photo may be approximately two megabytes. A three minute song saved in a compressed version may be roughly three megabytes in size. And the uncompressed version may take up to 30 megabytes of disk space. Next up, times it by 1,000 again, and you get a gigabyte, capital G, capital B or sometimes abbreviated as gigs. One gigabyte worth of data is about one movie at TV quality, or 230 music tracks, or 605 megapixel photos. Now, anything that can hold more than 1,000 gigs will be measured in terabytes, or capital T, capital B. At this point, we are looking at one trillion bytes of information, and that's a lot. A basic CD holds about 700 megabytes and a DVD holds roughly 4.7 gigabytes. You'd thus need nearly 1,430 CDs or 213 DVDs to get one terabyte of storage. You may see new computers or gaming consoles offering one terabyte or larger hard drives. And if you download many AAA games, high-res movies, or deal with large files on the regular for your job, you may even want to upgrade beyond that. You are watching this on Kingston's YouTube channel, so I feel obligated to mention that Kingston makes some kickin' one terabyte and larger SSDs if you're looking for an upgrade, just saying. All right, so what's beyond one terabyte? 1,000, but technically 1,024 terabytes of data is known as a petabyte, or capital P, capital B. This is 1,000 units of one trillion, so one quadrillion bytes. Most of the consumer storage devices can hold a maximum of a few terabytes, therefore petabytes are rarely used to measure memory capacity of a single device. Instead, petabytes are used to measure the total data stored in large networks or server farms. For example, internet giants like Google and Facebook store more than over 100 petabytes of data on their data servers. 
Games like World of Warcraft need online servers that can handle 1.5 petabytes of storage to run, and the U.S. Library of Congress contains over 7 petabytes of digital data in its archives. I know the scale of petabytes can seem hard to conceptualize, but once you start thinking about these larger real-life scenarios, you can see why we need a term for it. Now, even larger than that, we have terms like exabyte or capital E, capital B, zettabyte, capital Z, capital B, and yottabyte, capital Y, capital B. These units of measurements are so large, you will probably never really need to know them, not yet at least. But hey, the sky's the limit for the future. Just to give you an idea, several hundred exabytes of data are transferred over the internet in a year. All the data in the world is just a few zettabytes, and yottabytes at this point are used for conceptualizations only. But now you know. It's wild to think how far we've come in just a few short decades in terms of consumer storage and where we might be in the next five to 10 years. Anywho, I'm going to go add another terabyte of storage to my gaming PC because Age of Empires 4 alone took up a quarter of my storage. But totally worth it and the campaign rules. All right, everyone. See you next time with more DIY in 5.